Hey, I'm John Greaves the third to find a garage gym life. And I love talking to cool people who own home gyms. And I am doing that today. My guest today is Teresa Burkett, the owner and founder of Silver is the New Strong. She's also got a huge Instagram. And I mean, huge, 200,000 plus following on Instagram where you can follow her at Homebody Trainer. And I'm so glad to be able to talk to Teresa. Thanks for joining me here today, Teresa. Oh, thank you so much for having me, John. Excited to be here. <laughs> uh, this is this is super cool um, because I really don't know. It's like with so many people, I don't know how I stumbled across your Instagram, but it like the algorithm showed it to me and I was like, oh, this is so cool. So I am I'm definitely looking forward to jumping into this. Uh, so I know you guys are going to enjoy this. Before we get started, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe for me. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and it's not going to happen if you don't help me. So I know you're going to enjoy this content. Hit like for me, hit subscribe. And if you love this interview, share it with somebody else who can be inspired by Teresa as much as you are going to be. So Teresa, let's get all in your business. All right. <laughs> You live just outside Columbus, Ohio, and to people like me, um, the immediate connection is to the Arnold Sports Festival. Um, had you been to the Arnold ever before you competed in the Pump and Run Challenge? That was in 2022, I think. Yeah, my husband and I, like, actually, we love going there, love checking out all the, uh, you know, the uh, expos and everything. And uh, one year I won... A life, well, not a lifetime, a year's uh, supply of tuna doing one of their, <laughs> they have those little, um, the challenges. Yeah, stuff. little challenges. Yeah. And I did a uh, pull up challenge and I won a t shirt. So, yeah. So, really that was a like pull up challenge you did with the Marine Corps, right? Yeah. Uh, happy early birthday. It's November 9th as we're recording this. So, happy early birthday to all my former Marines. We're going to be 248. So, rah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> the thing, how long have you lived in Ohio? All my life. Okay, so uh, I know this wasn't in the questions I asked you, but since you said you love going to the Arnold, how crazy is it to you that Columbus has become like this mecca for people from around the world? Because before that, it was like the only people that went there were, I guess, people that wanted that were like fans of Ohio State. Now it's like people come from all over the world. Like this is my dream to come to the Ar come to Columbus for the Arnold. It is crazy, and it's it's huge. You know, when you're down there doing the uh, the run, it's yeah. just yeah, just a sea of people. And literally, you're walking. You know, it's shoulder to shoulder. Oh, but yeah, yeah it's uh, it's amazing. And when I did that run, my husband actually got a picture. Arnold was like right here. So I have a great <laughs> picture of me. Oh, wow. So one so I will Arnold cherish me. forever. I didn't really so, meet him, but. He didn't meet you. Let's keep this in perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mentioned that you've got a ton of followers on Instagram, over 200,000 as we're doing this interview. You got people who reach out to you, telling you how much you inspire them. Does that ever like come a little bit of a burden? I don't mean like you hate talking to the, your followers, I mean, like, do you feel like the pressure? Like, okay, I have to kind of meet these people's expectations every day. You know, honestly, it's very humbling. I appreciate all of the people who take time to follow me. It blows my mind <laughs> sometimes that there's that many people and uh, I love them all. And actually it's, it motivates me to get out of bed and come down here and do something that, you know, possibly might inspire another person. And I would love to be able to meet them all and give them all a big giant hug. Since I can't do that, I try really hard. I try so hard to get back with people. And, and um, sometimes that's just an emoji hug. But yes, I definitely love them. I'm, it, it means the world to me. Uh, let's switch into training a little bit. I love how much you challenge yourself regularly. Um, you pulled... 185, so you deadlifted, 185 pounds for 10 reps in 30 seconds. You benched 65 pounds for 30 reps, but you also did the Thor challenge where, for those who are watching who don't know what that is, it's where you take the uh, a barbell by one sleeve, so you grab the fat part of the barbell on one end, and you lift it and you lever it up, okay? So you did that, and obviously you, you did one rep of that, and then you also banged out a knuckle push-up with what looked like a 25-pound plate on your back, you know, for one rep. Whether you posted it or not, 
what's the wildest thing you ever did just to be like, I wonder, I wonder if I can, because that's, a, that's what happens when you start <laughs> lifting. You start wondering if you can pick stuff up. Yeah. It's like, you can't help it. Everything you see is like, I wonder if I can pick that up. <laughs> so well, what's the wildest thing you've ever done? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I pick? Oh, uh, I bet you. Uh. <laughs> so what's the wildest thing you've ever done? I'd say uh, probably hanging from my pull-up bar, throwing a five pound dumbbell and catching it more than once, switching hands and catching it again. I don't even nice. know what made me think of trying that, but uh, I did nice. it and I was pretty happy with it. So <laughs> you never know if you don't try, right? Nice, nice. <laughs> but I will say that Thor challenge, I think, uh, you know how you'll see somebody, you, I kept seeing it a lot. And I think <laughs> when I saw, I think I saw you do it and I apologize if I didn't give you credit for it, but you know how That's you awesome. see it. And then like three days later, you're like, yeah. I'm going to go now. I don't know who that was that I saw. Uh, and I, oh, I have to apologize to anybody that I've done that too. But um, anyway, I tried it. Okay. <laughs> that was challenging, <laughs> but I got it up there and the, uh, my um, floor joists w were in the way. And then I kind of, I think the hardest part was that when I put it down, I put it down really hard. So I ended up with a little bruise on my leg, but I wore that proudly. <laughs> so for me, it was, uh, um, I had the same experience. That's why if anyone has seen the video of me doing it, uh, I don't know if I actually posted it here on YouTube or if I only posted it on, it's like one of my maybe three videos on TikTok. <laughs> and I don't even go back on TikTok anymore. <laughs> but um, and I may have put it on Instagram. Anyway, the because it, it's been a while, but. The first, the reason why it's outside in the driveway is the first time I did it, I hit the ceiling. I hit, like I said, I hit the ceiling joist just like you did. I said, like, "Bam!" Okay, well, okay, that's <laughs> not cool. So I went outside because I didn't know how much I could do. So I started with the bar, and then and I hit the ceiling. I said, "Well, that didn't feel super hard, but I don't know, you know, if I could actually do more with this. Let's do it without the rafters anyway." So we went out. I went outside. I think I ended up doing it with like five, maybe 10 pounds on the end. And I was plenty happy. Okay. <laughs> plenty happy with five or 10 pounds. So the fact that you did it with the bar is, is super, super impressive to me. Um, well, you are you. amazingly strong. You originally started deadlifting with a trap bar and actually you were interviewed by oxygen magazine and they mentioned that you only deadlifted with a trap bar. But then when I'm watching you train, I see, Hey, she's using a straight bar. You're deadlifting, um, sumo and conventional you know what did it take to build the confidence to switch from just the trap bar to a straight bar as well well actually i started using the straight bar and okay. i think in oxygen magazine i know i definitely told him i quit putting a bar on my back to squat because i okay. have arthritis in my neck so i used to deadlift with a straight bar and I wasn't getting anywhere i was i was like cheering myself on when I could do 95 pounds, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so once I got that hex bar or trap bar, whatever, um, yeah. it, it was like, I, uh, changed everything. I could definitely lift a lot heavier. I felt it was safer. You know, it's, uh, you're, it's, you're centered in the middle of the weight. Um, so yeah, that's why I started using that. And then it, you know, I became stronger. So then I started going back to the straight bar and definitely, can lift heavier oh but definitely my heavy heavy lift so i still use the trap bar Yeah, because you pulled like 300 with the trap bar it was like a block pull i think yeah the the most i've ever done my pr was 340 340 look at you okay <laughs> you said i open the mayonnaise jars for you i open pickle <laughs> jars for you i don't need your help <laughs> that's funny uh how do you how do you handle that rotation of sumo conventional and trap bar is it based on what you're doing do you have like your program throughout the year like okay i'm gonna train six weeks on this sumo six weeks on conventional is it during you know throughout the week how do you set it up honestly i i am pretty intuitive i guess i just do what i feel like doing you know i just wake up and it's like yeah you know what i think today i'm going to try some i never ever used to do sumo ones i wasn't good at that and then i think i just started playing around with it and perfecting it a little bit more but there's no rhyme and reason i I pretty much follow a regular workout, but in that workout, if it's leg day, you know, I, I like to change it up. I may do some box jumps and along with, you know, so. You started strength training in your early fifties. How did it feel to be leveling up at a time when 
I'd say most of your peers are winding down because I just turned 50 and people I know my age, they're all winding down and they reminisce on like their good days. Like, oh yeah, 20 years ago, I could do this. Oh, I can't do that anymore. You know, it, it hurts now. I'm too old for all that. So I'm assuming that that happened to you. So how did it feel feel to you to be leveling up? Because you were getting stronger and you're still getting yeah. stronger. <laughs> so how does that feel? Feels good. <laughs> yeah, I um, I was amazed to watch myself get stronger. You know, um, I had never, you know, experienced strength training before. And it was uh, something very new to me. Um, I did a lot of cardio and light weights, you know, kickboxing, that type of stuff. Um, I started working with a, uh, so I wanted to do a figure competition in my early 50s. I'd gone through a divorce and uh, was flipping through Oxygen magazine, saw a figure competitor, and I thought, oh, I want to do that. Knew nothing about it. I was skinny and scrawny. <laughs> and uh, anyway, make a long story short, I did one show. and. I was well received by, did not place by any means, but it was a good experience. I loved it. I found out a lot about myself. And then I met a uh, bodybuilder guy and he said, you need to do a competition on an even playing field. You know, like where women your own age, because all these girls were young, but um, anyway, so he started training me and I had, I had never really, I thought I lifted weights, you know, and he kept telling me, you know, you're the, you're doing too much cardio. And I kept thinking, no, you know, I'm, I'm not doing any cardio. Well, I was like the cardio queen. I think a lot of women think I'm going to the gym and working out. And you say, what do you do? And it's like, well, I did, you know, an hour on the treadmill. And then I did a hit class and, and I worked out. And um, So, yeah, the whole working with Randy and um, him teaching me, you know, the fundamentals of lifting, like, and that's really when my body started changing and I started putting on muscle and it, you know, it's taken years and I'm still not a big bulky. A lot of women think they're going to get big and bulky and it just doesn't happen. But I'm fascinated at 50. Well, I'm going to be 64 um, next week. Yeah, on the 18th, <laughs> I right? Am, I am literally stronger than I've ever been. And I like to, that's kind of where I am with in my life is I like to focus on my strength and being stronger, not necessarily, I want to look skinny and tone, <laughs> which is a, you know, a lot of women, that's their goal. And I think a lot of women don't realize what you have to do. You know, those, the women who have nice, tight tone bodies are not doing that. They're not getting that just doing cardio. So yeah, it's a, I, I love where I am in my life and uh, glad I made the choices that I made. So. Hey guys, if you are enjoying watching this, please do me a favor, help me out. Yeah, there are ways to support this channel. Uh, you can go ahead and click that link that's in the, there's a shopping button, all right? It's down like in the left-hand corner. If you click on that, you'll be able to check out the stuff that I use to do interviews like this, my headphones, the kind of microphone I use, different products like that. And if you just click on those links, it's going to help support the channel and make it possible for me to do even more stuff like this. Because maybe one day I want to have enough funding to be able to travel to Teresa's gym to be able to train with her one day. All right. That would so be I, awesome. need, I need you guys help to get me there. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about your gym because your husband built it. Uh -huh. Before we get into that, when you met your husband, <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have the talk? Like, hey, uh, you know, like, let's say, I don't know if you were speed dating or whatever. Uh, but when you met, you're like, hey, okay, look, let's just set it all on the table. Um, I like to hang from a bar outside. <laughs> And, and then while I'm hanging from the bar, I, I like changing clothes. Um, and then sometimes maybe I might not change clothes, but you might come outside and see me hanging from the bar and throw in an ax. Don't get alarmed. And if there's an egg missing, it's because I was holding it between my feet while throwing the ax. Just, just don't worry about it, okay? Don't, don't be alarmed. Did you guys have that talk? And You've then if you did, homework. what was that reaction? Oh, uh, actually, when we met... Uh, my husband was a lot more, into, he's actually, it still is into mountain biking and snowboarding. And um, I don't like to do that. I don't like to fall. Oh, <laughs> I tried yeah. mountain biking. I tried snowboarding. Actually, I came home when we were dating, came home, I think it was on Valentine's Day. And laying on my bed was 
a brand new snowboard, all the gear. <laughs> I went like once or twice. I'm like, that's not my like, thing. Yeah, no. So we just, we tease each other. We do like to uh, hike and run and all that stuff together. But um, yeah, I just leave the snowboarding to him and he leaves the uh, changing my clothes on the pull-up bar to me. <laughs> Seems fair. Yeah. Seems fair. So, um, like I said, he he built your home gym, so that's definitely supportive. And, he you did. Know, that dude gets a shout out. <laughs> um, it's got an awesome view of the woods, but it looks like you have to go outside to access the gym. Does that affect what time of day you train? Uh, not really. I'm pretty much on a regular schedule with training, and, and we do have some, like, floodlights. So, of course, the right. time changed, so now it is <laughs> pretty much dark when I come down. But uh, yeah, I just kind of go down my de deck and around the corner and it's in the basement. But I have seen, I've been on my pull-up bar. I did a video and after I was all done with it, I turned, I looked, played the video back and there were three deer running behind me in the video. And another time there was a fox. Um, okay. It wasn't in the video, but um, so no, I, you know, and luckily I don't think we have any bears around here. And we have a, a very big protective dog. She's my my uh, best buddy so i'm never really worried too much about that and i just lock myself in here i have my you know do you like to train with music or do you just kind of like let it be quiet do you open a window and just listen to the the nature sounds like what is it for you my wonderful husband not only built me a gym he put in a an amazing sound system in here <laughs> okay and i do you know i it's funny cuz i listen to really like hardcore crazy motivational stuff um something i'd never listen to in the car or anything but it has to be very motivating and my husband will come down and it's like oh, i want to watch that blah 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 well, i'm i just cannot stay focused i like to have you know motivational music in the background do you know who eric thomas the hip-hop preacher is i don't know i probably have heard his he's music. got things like uh all i do is grind i grind I grind in the morning. He's like that kind of stuff. He's, he's I'll bet you it's like, on one of my playlists that I okay, listen yeah. to. It sounds like it. That's right, the kind so, of stuff I like to listen to. Because I was like, okay, so you're saying like motivational stuff. I'm like, I'm picturing that. Like, oh, okay, I get you. He's like, um, he's got a ton of, actually, I'll share, you know, for anybody who's watching, I'll put a link. To, I don't get paid for recommending him, but I'll put a link to Eric Thomas's stuff if anybody doesn't know who that and is. It's Eric, Eric, Eric Thomas, Thomas, the hip hop preacher. I'm going to see, I'll look later and I'll let you know if it's one of them that's on my playlist. Super motivational guy. Uh, the people use his audio all of the time and then they'll put like bodybuilding stuff on top of it or something like that. Um, or sure some kind of training it. montage. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I think a lot of it's the words hearing that, you know, don't give up your, because a lot of the ones that are on the playlist that I listen to, that's exactly what they're saying. They're, you okay. know, it's almost like a preaching type thing to you, but the, you know, like Eminem's on there on one of them. Um, okay. What is it? Uh, uh, Lose yourself. So, so I say, yes, exactly. I like, um, I think that pumping, you know, that, that you know what I'm saying, that bass oh, yeah. and that pumping and and then the, like a, the, the lyrics. Now, and again, I wouldn't listen to that in the car. It's, I have a whole different, I listen to, you know, just old classic rock or you know the the top 40s or something like that but when i'm working out it has to be yeah now we mentioned that oxygen interview that you did and you said in an interview and that you kind of alluded to it a little bit about your neck but you said that you're limited because of arthritis in terms of like what you can do in terms of even doing yoga um has that improved as you've been training or is it pretty much you just say, okay, because I, I saw you working on your uh, middle splits and, and your straddle. And so I was just wondering if because of training, your mobility is improving as you've gotten stronger, or is it more like, hey, there's still some positions I just know I'm never going to be able to get back into? Yeah, I think I've learned to work around them. Um, little things like not looking up when I'm doing yoga. Um and then I had my, I had foot surgery in December. So now I have screws in my big toe and my second toe is fused together. So a simple little thing like a plank, mm. when you're on your toe like that, I can put my feet on the wall and hold a plank much better than I can. Um, 
So I have learned to work around that. And I have arthritis in my hands and my little fingers are really, my knuckles are getting bad. Mm -hmm. But I have definitely noticed that hanging and working on my grip strength has helped so much. Like I can't imagine what my hands would be like if I didn't keep them moving. Like I said, I choose to not put the bar on my back, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop me. You know, you just got to find ways to work around your limitations, I guess. Okay. So I forgot to mention this when you first said that about putting the bar on your back. I'm assuming that's a straight bar. Have you tried using like a safety squat bar or even the Mars bar? You know, I haven't. That's, I tried doing front squats. I'm terrible at those. <laughs> um, so you're talking about the one that has like the handles here and you can, no, I have not tried that. I might uh, have to check into that. Uh, again, this is another product I don't get paid for. I am taking money. I keep saying I don't get paid for that, but I am taking money. So if anybody wants to send me money, I'm, I'm cool with it. <laughs> But the Mars bar uh, is Mars a really bar. popular product. Um, uh, I'll send you the link, Teresa. Um, I appreciate and the, that. And then I'll put the link in the description of the video for anyone else who's curious about it. There's several different varieties. Um, there's also the Kabuki transformer bar. And I personally like using the Elite FTS SS yoke bar. But for what you're describing um, is the issue, I think the Mars bar might be your jam. Cause, uh, so it comes down over like this and it kind of, you don't even have to have your hands on it wow. in order to, to lift with it. Um, yeah. So it comes over your shoulders. You, you kind of go up into it like this, like, uh, the thing on a roller coaster, you know, the little thing that keeps you from flying out of a roller coaster. So you go up into it like that and you can just wear it. And, um, I think it may be, it may be something that, um, I help you. And if not the transformer bar, has different settings so you can adjust the settings depending on you know what you're trying to accomplish it's even got a front squat setting oh really baseball. yeah so you don't actually put it on the front it's just where the load is shift is distributed it's still on your back but the way the load is distributed gives you front squat setting right oh wow i uh, i would yeah. love for you to send me the information is it like so as you, long you, as the uh, as a regular olympic bar okay so using the 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 bar i have the uh, elite fts ss yoke bar it's a safety squat bar uh, it is the same length as uh, my normal straight bar. So it, it has like a little bit of a curve and it sits on the, um, on, in the J cups, the J hooks. And so you just come up. So all you would need for your safety Smith machine is you'd need to have some J hooks that are, uh, I guess, on the outside of it. And then you just have somewhere to stick it. Now, there's, I mean, you could also get a set of squat stands if all you're doing that with is the um, is that particular exercise. You can get some squat stands and some safety spotters and go to town. Hmm. But yeah, I'll send you um, I'll send you links for all that. And like I said, for anyone who's watching, I will put the links in the description for this video. You know, that's just awesome. Maybe next on. time you see me, I'll be uh, I'll be squatting again. <laughs> I would yeah. like to. I mean, I really like doing it. I just did not like what it did to my neck. <laughs> Got you. So we talked about your birthday. It's November 18th. Um, what, and you'll be 64. What are you excited about being able to do now that you know you definitely couldn't do when you were 54? The first thing that comes to mind is deadlifting 310 pounds. I told you 340 was my PR, my, yeah my personal best. But anyway, lately I've been doing 310 pretty regularly. <laughs> I could have never, ever have done that when I was 54. And if you would have told me at 54, when you're 64, you're going to be doing 15 pull-ups in a row. I would say, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have never guessed I'd be climbing around on a pegboard. <laughs> That's my newest little toy in my gym. And that is hard to do, but I am loving playing around on that. So. And that's a lot of my whole mission is to um, reach the younger women, to let them know, you know, <laughs> it took, it's not like I started doing 15 pull-ups overnight, but just think where you're going to be 10 years from now if you start, you know, and where you're going to be 10 years from now if you don't start, because you can definitely get stronger no matter where you're at, no matter what age you are, so. You remind me so much of Vasily Grishenkov. 
think he's in his 70s. Um, he is a former Olympian and he's a former uh, coach uh, in track and field. And uh, I know he follows you on Instagram. We do follow each other and we used to do quite a bit of different challenges. Um, and there's another guy, Carrie Dam. I don't know how to say his last name, D'Ambrosio, I believe, but him and his wife, um, Carrie and I had done some challenges together, but, and there's a, several others. I'm terrible with names, but just to name a few. Yeah. So one thing that people always talk about when you start to get older is that as you age, it gets harder to recover from stuff. And so my response as a young man, I'm 50 years old, so I'm young. Yeah, sure. Um, just a pop. I'm not. So. I'm not even halfway yet. <laughs> I just tell people, I say, look, to be honest with you, especially based upon my family uh, history genetically, I'm not even halfway to my lifespan, my projected lifespan. So, um, but I still understand, you know, like the recovery thing. So, my response to the whole thing about it being hard to recover now is, uh, I started lifting weights at 19, and it was nothing for me to be out all night trying to, you know, I wasn't married, so I'm out in uh, in bars and clubs. Um, for a while there, I was actually bouncing in clubs. So I'm up all night and then go to the gym. Like, oh yeah, that's cool. Now, you know, older, wiser me knows that's a dumb idea. So yeah. I'm not doing that to myself. But then you actually have leveled up even more because I have to go to work, you know? So I have to work, manage my training schedule around work. Um, you... I, I told my dad, you know, I said, the thing is, if you train and you're sore and you need to recover, you lay back down. I mean, you, you don't have anywhere to be. Mm -hmm. So there are some advantages to retirement and being and saying, hey, I'm going to dive into taking care of my body and taking advantage of all the tools available to take care of my body that we don't have as younger people. Has that been something that you've noticed that, you know, as long as you train sensibly, that recovery is not an issue for you? I would say that's true. I um, I just, after my workouts, I go about my day, you know, I got house cleaning and uh, running errands. Between my husband and I, we have 10 grandchildren. I oh. wish, wish I could spend more time with them, but uh, I value the time that I do get. Uh, the two little ones um, live pretty close, so I get to see them <laughs> more regularly. Um, but Usually on Sundays, I don't, I try really hard not to do anything other than re rest and recover. You know, we have a hot tub, we have a um, massage chair. Oh, so you just sit in that thing and fall asleep. Um, <laughs> so every night after, you know, after dinner, that's usually where I am. Um, but no, I don't, you know, I don't come up, I don't lay down afterwards. I just go about my day. But I will tell you, I definitely go to bed really early and I am up really early. Um, occasionally I have trouble sleeping. Um, so I might read or something like that, but I'm usually always in bed, you know, 9 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm up usually at 4 30. <laughs> if I sleep in until the alarm goes off at 5 30, I'm like, wow, I slept in, but I, yeah, I don't, I really, uh, I don't, I, I feel like I push myself really hard in the gym but not to the point where I'm toasted, you know, like, okay, I can't do anything else. I think that would be overkill for me. So you, you, your Instagram, we talked about it earlier is home body trainer. Uh, your brand is silver is the new strong. And I assume that came after your Instagram, which is that, why they don't have, is that why they don't have the same name? That is correct. Um, why did you not just rebrand? Is it because you already had a big following as home body trainer? Well, when I got on Instagram, um, so before that, I had a little business called, well, not a little business, a business called Home Bodies Traveling Trainer. And I would actually go to people's homes, work them out. I was kind of focusing on like moms at home with small children. So I would bring the weights and everything to them. And then that kind of evolved into uh, going to people's places of employment, working their employees out on their lunch hour and, uh, there, you know, did boot camps outside. So um, I just, and my email was homebody trainer. So when I first decided to get on Instagram, you know, you have to pick a name and I'm like, oh, let's just do homebody trainer. And then as I was on it, I also, Silver is the New Strong started evolving. And that is why 
So on TikTok, I am now silver is the new strong because I I got really brave and got on TikTok. I was <laughs> talking about really petrified to do something, but um, they have, I've been so well received there and it's been another really cool experience for me. So, but that is why I know I have all kinds of funny names. It's like uh, Teresa Starkey on my <laughs> Facebook because that was my name before I remarried. And uh, for, it was just a big hassle. I couldn't get it changed. And uh, yeah, so I've got all kinds of names. For your specific form of inspiring content, I think that the shorter, short form stuff makes a lot of sense. I think TikTok is probably an ideal fit for you. Um, but what's been the most satisfying thing about starting Sober is the New Strong? I would have to say that I found my purpose. Um when I was younger, the, the thought of getting old, getting wrinkly, getting gray hair, all of that was like, to me, I thought that's the future I've got to look forward to. <laughs> like, it just did not sound appealing to me at all. And, um, you know, I, I guess I had a light bulb moment. I think, you know, when I, because I started later in life too, strength training and things like that. And I started thinking, man, I'm getting stronger. And, um, it made me realize that it is not your gray hair and your wrinkles that ages us, but it is our lack of strength and muscle. And that that's something we, we can all do something about. You know, we can take control of that to a degree. And I always think all the Botox and hair color in the world can't pick me up when I fall down, you know, mm -hmm. as I age. So it, it is, it, that is to me, what that what ages you is your lack of strength and i feel like if i can inspire and encourage other women especially i mean men too but mostly women that you know take care of yourself now when you're young don't fret wrinkles and and uh, gray hair you know and and stretch marks we've earned those wear them proudly mm -hmm. But work on your body and keep it strong and fit. And, you know, I, I feel like your body will serve you well. So the response that I've gotten and the the thought that if one person tells me I inspired them to start going to the gym, that to me is everything as far as starting Silver is a New Strong. So I want people to know how to get in touch with you. But before, and so we're going to put all your contact information in the description for this video. I'm going to put card links to your YouTube channel, to your website, and at, and we'll have an end screen. Uh, so you want to watch to the end because I have an end screen with a link to be able to catch up with Teresa. And she's also going to give you guys her information at the end. But before we do that, i like to end with rapid fire. Oh, so, boy. <laughs> so these are the rapid fire questions. And... Teresa has not been told these questions in advance because I want to get your raw reaction. And um, I just, there's only like five of them. I just think it's fun. All right. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Are you sure? Right. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I, I think my dog needs me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. Too late. <laughs> All right. You've done cold plunges and towel chin-ups in the winter in a bikini for some reason. <laughs> How cold is too cold to train outdoors? To train outdoors? I, I wouldn't train outdoors in the snow, but I think it's fun to go out there for a little while and play around. So maybe uh, five minutes of playing around in the snow. <laughs> Sleep all day. Chill in your massage chair or sit in the hot tub? Sit in the hot tub. What's harder? Changing clothes while hanging from a pull-up bar? Or doing a full dumbbell workout underwater. <laughs> you didn't think I saw that, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'd say doing a full workout underwater. That was that was pretty challenging. Uh, who would win an arm wrestling match between first thing in the morning, Teresa, and mid-afternoon, Teresa? First thing in the morning, Teresa. Last one. This is the most important question. Uh -oh. Anyone will ever ask you. All right. Ready? I'm ready. What do you want to be when you grow up? Just want to be who I am, but stronger. <laughs> I like that. 
I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. a mic drop. <laughs> Who I am, but stronger. There we go. All right, Teresa, this was an awesome conversation. And as I said, I want people to be able to, number one, follow your inspiring content on Instagram, on TikTok, wherever people want to encounter you. You're on several different platforms. So give them your uh, social media information. And then I also want to support Silver is the New Strong. So I want people to be able to buy the merchandise, like that banner that's uh, behind you. I, I think you have mugs, things like that. So I just got a shirt here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. So you've got all this stuff. So I want people to be able to get that. So I appreciate I'm gonna that. Put, Thank I'm going to put the links in, in, like I said, but go ahead and tell people how they can access everything they need to be able to keep up with you and to support your business. Thank you. So you can find me on uh, Instagram under Homebody Trainer. Silver is the new strong on TikTok and my YouTube channel, Silver is the new strong. And if you want to buy any of my cool merchandise, like this banner, my sweatshirt, so much more, coffee mugs, all that, you can find that on silveristhenewstrong.com.